and that recording is in progress. Excellent. So again, I want to welcome you all to our presentation on optimizing your LinkedIn profile to get the job. My name is Cliff Guerin. I am on the team for the uh, Career and Professional Development Center here at WGU. Uh, we brought in two uh, guests to also talk and share some of their experience. Uh, they will introduce themselves just a little bit uh, to let you know who they are from the program. Um, but you will be meeting Shailen Prem and also Matt Alexander. Um, we have Jessica Deal, who was with us also from the Career and Professional Development Center to help take the chat and put any links in as we go forward. What we'll be covering for our time today will be a little personal story of job searching that also covers some LinkedIn uh, profiles and how that was used for uh, her job search. Then we'll go into some general tips for job searching using LinkedIn. We'll talk about how to, how to optimize your profile. What are the strategies that will really help get you noticed when you're on the job search? And then some recent updates for LinkedIn that can help better your profile and your, your reach when you're out there using LinkedIn as one of your tools for job searching. We'll talk about tips to maintaining your presence because you don't want this to be static. You don't want us to just to have a one and done type of approach when you're using something as dynamic and active as a LinkedIn profile. So we'll talk about ways to keep you active and present out there during that time. And then we'll turn the mic over to you all. So if you have questions at the end of this, then we will be able to uh, do the best we can to answer those questions. This is a good time to say after this scheduled presentation, we'll transition to what the Career and Professional Development Center has been doing recently, and that is a drop-in hour. So the drop-in hour is like office hours. Just we're going to open the doors. We'll continue the conversation. We'll just switch rooms and go to our drop-in time for you to continue the questions and answers or sharing even your own experiences with LinkedIn uh, going forward. So without further ado, I would like to hand this over to Shay and she will talk to you a little bit about her background with using LinkedIn during her job search. Thanks, so Shay, Bobby. go Thanks, for it. Thanks, Cliff. Appreciate it. I am Shay Prem. I am my technical title here in the College of IT is a lead academic program manager. I am essentially a product manager. So I uh, oversee the product management for the bachelor's and master's programs in data analytics. Um, I am also a WGU student, a grad student. Um, I'm not in the College of IT, but I am uh, experiencing um, what many of you um, are experiencing, especially those joining us from outside of the College of IT today. So um, I have been a product manager for um, over a decade. Uh, and when I was in my last company, before I joined WGU, I was laid off after 10 years. I really um, was trying to figure out what my next role was. I thought maybe I would try something different, do a little bit of a career pivot, a career transition. Um, so I invested some time and money into LinkedIn. I got uh, LinkedIn um, premium because I wanted to be able to access some of the LinkedIn learning resources as I really tried to figure out what I wanted to do. The next step for me that was really helpful, um, I went through a workforce agency that helped me um, get access to a LinkedIn workshop. So before I did the LinkedIn workshops, I actually did some personal branding workshops, which I highly recommend. And I know that the Career and Professional Development Center also offers some um, personal branding exercises. But once I was able to go through that and then attended the LinkedIn um, workshops, I was able to really find a way to share my voice and plug and play through some steps that were provided to me. Um, you'll see this is my real LinkedIn um, profile. 
Um, and I know Cliff will talk more about it and Matt will touch on some of the optimization pieces too, but just to really highlight some of the things that um, I focused on um, in my LinkedIn page were things like keywords, um, really trying to advocate for my brand and my story. And ultimately what happened for me is after about six months of searching after all those, um, after it was really even within a couple of months of taking the LinkedIn workshop um, that I had gotten a, a email from WGU from a recruiter that said, we saw your profile and we wanna bring you in for an interview. Um, on paper, when I saw that job, it's not something that I would have felt confident about um, applying to, but because of the work that I did, it removed some of the nerve or bias or things that I might have felt to um, that I was applying for. I was applying for roles that were the same and I was getting through first round interviews, second round interviews, um, but wasn't getting all the way through to get a job to get hired. Um, but again, I did the work to put into my LinkedIn profile and somebody came and found me. Um, and I was qualified and I went through the interview process and I got the job and I am just so grateful and so excited, um, that I can share that story and, and advocate for using LinkedIn. Um, I did write a couple other notes to, um, you know, some of the other really great things about that experience is I, I had a very large increase in pay. I was able to advocate for working remote. Um, some things that I was struggling as I was doing the job search that weren't coming to the forefront. But once I started to make those adjustments and tweaks in LinkedIn, I had people reaching out to me because my LinkedIn was set up to be found by these recruiters. So it was really helpful for me to um, take those steps. And I think that's probably a really great time for Cliff to talk about some of those steps as we worked collaboratively and close together to say, hey, these are some of the things that I know that I did, which aligned perfectly with the um, Career and Professional Development Center's um, LinkedIn workshop. So I'll pass it back over to you. And feel free to find me on LinkedIn. I love followers. I love connecting. So um, if you want to take a closer look at my profile after this session, I please, I, I love sharing it. You can take a deeper dive, make the connections on what Cliff's going to talk about. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for letting me share my story and happy to answer any questions during Q&A. Great. Thanks, Shay. All right. Let me get my slides going. All right. So really some good tips as as Shay was leading into some of this that helped her. So some of the tips about that can help those in the IT or the data analytics programs for job searching is kind of obvious. You want to have a job target. So you, you want to have an idea of what you want to do with your degree program, with your background. Um, and if you're already in your job, you're already in what you're doing, and you need to go back to your LinkedIn profile to fine tune it toward your your selected uh, profession that you're in makes it an even stronger profile. And again, those those algorithms based on the job titles, the keywords, the focus that you're you're creating really stop starts with that that opening homepage that's there. So from there, one of the best ways to understand how to build that is find the job description or a sample job description of the kind of work that you would want to be doing so you can understand two things from a job description that top part of the document will describe what the job entails this is what you would be doing on a daily basis as your normal operations then that second part of the job description breaks down into now here at least are the minimum qualifications we will be looking for these skills. We will be looking for these uh, specific areas of program languages, databases, tools that you would be using. So the real hard skills that, that we'd be looking for, both parts of that job description are important 
So if you can highlight the key areas that you can match so that you would be able to identify what the job wants, what the career is about, but also to align your own background and skills so that when you're building your, your LinkedIn profile, that's becoming more and more keyword rich, if you will, um, especially for those um, optimization uh, parts of your, of your profile. You want to research and follow employers. So there's a section on LinkedIn, as you may know, who you want to follow. Make sure they're in your area, make, obviously. Make sure they're in your targeted area of interest. Um, because if it, gets too, if it gets too messy, so to speak, or if it gets too watered down by various unrelated you know, experts that you're following, it may be confusing to the recruiter as far as what's the message you're really trying to get across. So again, connecting with those professionals, making the contact when you're obviously with the, uh, the, um, the purpose of LinkedIn is to network. So we'll talk a little bit about using the alumni tool, which is a way for you to identify what WGU students or alumni are in my field that have a LinkedIn profile. There's an excellent connection right there on the ability to network with your peers, the people who are doing the very same thing you're searching for or you're studying for from WGU. So connecting through that alumni tool, finding out who they are, where they work, what their background is, is an excellent way to begin to connect with those professionals. And then going outside the alumni tool, you know, doing a, a standard LinkedIn search for folks in your industry is obviously an open, um, open form as well to do that. All of these things that we're talking about as far as these tips for job searching is part of your job search plan and your ability to be able to bring all these pieces together. They may be in your mind and you're thinking of, here's how I want to approach it. But once you put it on paper and you have a written plan, that makes it kind of a different animal, if you will. I'm not gonna get into all the science, but research has shown that, that parts of the action of bringing what's in your thought processes to a hard document and paper kind of bring you to the next level of accountability. That now I know what it is, I've written it down, it's in front of my face, I need to be accountable for that. So that job search plan can be important as you're putting together your uh, LinkedIn profile. So other tips for optimization, if you follow this as well, can be very helpful. So when you optimize your job search and you're kind of following these steps, so to speak, you're in the ability to really be able to make yourself more present. So you have that, that result to be more visible to employers. And I know that in the settings, you can choose, do I want my, do I want my company to see this? Will they know that I'm job searching? Do I want only recruiters to see this? Do I only want those who are connected to me to see what's going on? So you do have some options, but the more visible you are, the better reach you're going to have when you're trying to make that connection with recruiters and other employers. That also helps to build your professional brand. And when I first heard of this way back in the day about your own brand, I wasn't sure what they were trying to get across. It's like, like Coca-Cola, like, you know, you know Fritos. I, what, what exactly you're talking about that? But what's your, what's your specialty? What do you want to be known for? What's your professional brand to get out there? It doesn't mean you have to have a logo or, or some kind of, registered trademark. But if I were to ask you, you know, so tell me what's your, um, tell me who you are. Tell me a little bit about yourself. That could help to build your professional brand. And that too is a very important part of LinkedIn. You also had that opportunity during some features, and we're going to talk about the features section of your LinkedIn account to where you can post articles, you can give your opinion on certain areas of your expertise to begin to build yourself as a subject matter expert. 
um, building that ability to show yourself and how you grow um, within your industry. You're standing out for that. You're putting the spotlight on yourself. You're building those relationships. Once you start getting that that number increasing of how many people are viewing your your profile, then you can with with certain features you can go back to find out who's looking at my profile. Then I'm going to connect with them, and then you're beginning this activity of building relationships and networks, and then eventually that's going to hopefully grow into um, that connection. Like Shay said, that she was contacted by folks who were able to look at her profile, see what they liked about it, and then make that kind of that personal physical contact with you. Now, these are all kind of driven by those algorithms we keep talking about and the things that, you know, that what's going on uh, in the background to get the message out there and then, you know, bringing it back, so to speak, with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now hand this over to Matt so he could talk a little bit about how that process works. Yeah, thanks, Cliff. And uh, just to introduce myself here, my name is Matt Alexander. I'm a colleague of Shays. I'm also a lead academic program manager uh, for our software development and software engineering programs uh, in the College of IT. And so when, when I was asked about this, whenever I started thinking about this, uh, part of how I always think about uh, what I would tell students, whenever you're going into a test, think about, who wrote the test and, and what they're looking for. The same kind of idea applies here. Whenever you're going into LinkedIn and looking for jobs and updating your profile, um, you want to think about the other perspective, the recruiters, what they're looking for, but now also we have these algorithms in between you and the recruiters. And there are all sorts of algorithms. Um, the two main ones, that you're uh, going to encounter with LinkedIn, the first is going to be the one that determines sort of what goes on your feed, similar to Facebook or an Instagram or a Twitter feed, right? This algorithm is determining what you see and what others see uh, from you, right? The second type of algorithm is specifically the search algorithms. Um, you'd probably think something more like Google for search algorithms, right? And that one's going to look for specific and related terms on your profile and in several specific areas. So some of the tips will be targeted towards these different algorithms. Uh, Cliff already mentioned about engaging and, and positioning yourself as a thought leader. And a lot of that is, is aiming towards that first algorithm. The more connections you have, and we're not necessarily talking about LinkedIn connections only, uh, those are important too, the connections that you make uh, with others on LinkedIn. But the more connections you have via your interactions with posts related to the industry that you're interested in, the more often those will pop up on your feed and the more likely your posts will be engaged with by others in that same industry, right? Similarly for searches, whenever you're looking through your profile and optimizing it, the more connections you have that are related to the specific jobs and industry that you're looking for, the more likely you are to be a strong uh, result from any recruiter searches or anything like that. Now, keep in mind, at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a business. They want to make money, right? Um, and so that last bullet here, paid and premium subscriptions, will artificially boost search results, will artificially bo bo boost um, posts on LinkedIn, right? So you wanna balance the, the sort of um, natural recruiting things that you're doing by connecting with others and, and trying to build your network out manually, along with the idea that it's, possibly going to be beneficial to go ahead and pay some of that money to give yourself an artificial boost in those search results and in your posting. All right, I thanks. It goes back to Cliff, yep. Okay, <laughs> thanks so much. All right, so uh, to help with that and, and all of those algorithms and things that, that you might be working with, some key considerations when optimizing your LinkedIn profile and really maintaining that activity 
that proactive uh, approach has a lot of benefits to that. And uh, some of those will be to really make sure that your profile is current and complete. So, and I'm gonna make a kind of a, a, a connection here. Um, if any of you are using Handshake, which is our career platform that we use for the uh, Career and Professional Development Center, let's just say that Handshake and LinkedIn are like kissing cousins, so to speak. Uh, some similar uh, purposes or purpose for both of those to be used. So what I, when I work with students on their handshake and they say, well, it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. I get all these, you know, irrelevant jobs or, or whatever the case may be. I go into their handshake account and I see that they're only 15% complete or they're 35% complete. They're missing sections. Or. be robust it's got to be complete you really want to have each section filled out as much as possible and they really need to be as targeted to your industry and specifics to the job you want as much as possible because again those descriptions and those keywords will be what is used through those algorithms where you can make contact with the right recruiters, with the right people that you wanna have and put out there. One of those things, as, as silly as it may sound, is your picture. <laughs> so having your picture, a good professional-like headshot, have somebody take your picture with your, with your phone, take it by yourself, but make sure there's nothing in the background that's cluttered. Um, I have, um, I have uh, a person who has a picture that was made and he had sunglasses on and he was holding his dog. That might look okay on LinkedIn or my, might look okay on Facebook, but not LinkedIn. So you want a good, clear headshot. Um, and one personal story about that, uh, my sister is in marketing, does a great deal with, with client facing uh, accounts that she manages. If she has someone who is applying for a position for her company, she'll go to their LinkedIn page and see what do they look like? What's their digital image? What's your digital footprint? How does that look? If there's no headshot, no picture, she just passes on to somebody else. And I've heard that from three other recruiters who say that that's a part that's incomplete. It's a part of the profile. So we want something that's going to be professional looking. Um, but we also look for that because that's a first impression. So a good, a good title, if you want, of, of your professional self, a headshot that's there. And also that background, um, banner that's behind you. That would be nice to have something related to your industry. For example, that could be there. And I think that's really important, uh, to use. I do want to point out something from Shay's banner that she had on hers. If you remember seeing it, let me see if I can go back. Right under the, the high, the yellow circle, what does it say? Let's connect. This is a call to action. This is what you want to have happen at the end of the day. You want to connect with the people who are going to help you and help advance and progress your career. It's a call to action through the entire process of each and every section that we're going to be talking to you about today. So take the time to fill out all those sections. Use the key elements. Make sure your profile is inviting and engaging, not just a few lines, not your life story, not your personal philosophy, but something that that explains and answers the question. So, Aaron, tell me about yourself. That's that section, powerful part of, of your profile. Other elements and key features of optimizing your profile ensures that you appear on LinkedIn searches when recruiters are 
searching for you and they're using their own algorithms and, and keywords to do that search and you want it to grab their attention and you want that to really invite them. That's that engaging, um, compelling part of your profile that is proactive and that is a call to action. Now, if we flip the script and we turn this around so the recruiters, what do they see from their view? We just wanted to share with you a little bit about what this looks like when recruiters are looking at, at, at this particular view. So you'll see at the top, you know, open to work, you know, uh, the, the stats for that active talent. That means they're, those are folks that are, that are out there and they're, they're active in that in the areas. So this is what they want to see. And this is what you really want to get across so that the filters that are based on what they're looking for, job titles, keywords, skill matches, um, active talent that open to work, which is that kind of bat signal to let them go. Um, just a real quick, you know, you've seen that probably that I call it a halo. So that halo, that green halo that says open to work. Um, I've heard different sides of the story on that. I've heard some who say they really don't like to see it for whatever reason. It might be their own, their own personal reason uh, slash professional reason. Um, again, it could be another area to where you're kind of letting folks know you're available. Uh, but looking at that open to work, um, having it turned on in your, in your settings, for the most part, I have seen and heard that it's, it's not a bad thing. It's kind of here nor there. I don't know if Shay or Matt has any much to say about that. We talked a little bit about that, but that's kind of my take on, on those areas. Yeah. <clears throat> um, just for, for clarity. So you can do open to work as a, a filter or a feature on your profile without having the green circle. So definitely advocate for always, if you're open to work, put it on. You can also switch and toggle to say, you know, pu public open to work or only open for recruiters. So if you're actively in a role and you don't want those people to know that you're looking, you can change that. So um, if you're looking, put open to work, the, the adding the green halo or the green circle, personal preference, um, like, like Cliff said in the beginning, what are the other people doing in your industry? What are the other people doing in your roles? Um, so trying to do the best that you can um, to, to emulate that can be helpful. But yeah, the open to work feature is um, helpful. That's, I had mine on, I didn't use the circle. So if anyone's keeping score of the things that I did or didn't do, <laughs> you, can, you can chalk that one on, so. That's great, thanks. All right. And again, from the recruiter's view, uh, when we're looking at some of the data and the research, um, going back to the profile and having everything completed, uh, LinkedIn has reported that the pages that are complete get more than 30% more views a week than those who are just kind of, you know, half there and half not. So uh, it, all, it all adds up and all has a, a, a purpose that's there. Can I make another comment, but I might be putting the, the cart before the horse a little bit, Cliff. Sure, sure. So you'll notice if you go back to that um, previous recruiter screen, these two examples are real examples, but they um, what's blocked off that you can't see says it's actually the headline. So it has their name and then it has their headline. So you just can't, you can't see the word headline, but you can see their keywords. In LinkedIn, your headline will automatically default to whatever your current role is at your current organization. You can change that and just more um, validation to say, do that, change it, put those keywords in for the skills that you have, the industry that you're looking for. And I think Cliff, you talk about, you might talk about that in a little bit more, but um, just wanted to make the connection that you're seeing it here but also as you think about when you're building out your profile to change those headers so that it brings in those keywords because on the left-hand side where the filters are, that's where they're saying, I want this keyword, I want that keyword. And that's what's matching up um, on the screen that they're actually able to go through and, and, and scroll. So not only is it in the skills match section, but it's also up there. Those keywords are gonna be up there in your job titles, in the experience section, but also in your header. Mm -hmm. 
thanks. Sorry if I if I took that away from you for later. <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. That's that's great. Thanks. Um, and I don't want to I don't want to to redirect us to to other areas either. But that that great tip that she had works with your resume. So you don't you know you don't just have one section to put those keywords that's in there, but they should be um, peppered throughout the document, not in a not in a linear fashion to where it's just repeated, but nicely repeated through the document or your profile so that those algorithms, you know, pick that up. Um, so that does have a place and a role in giving you kind of that match rate uh, going forward with it. So some areas of focus as we're breaking down the profile, if you will, to look at individual sections, some of these We've talked about before, but I think it's worth highlighting. Um, and Shay mentioned this just a moment ago: is that headline that's there, that's under your your picture, is a really good area to put those again, those keywords and areas that relate to your um, your profession, your the industry, your skill set, your strengths. That's going to be there, um, but you really want to write it to the job you want. So. If you're coming from, and I've had this with students I've worked for, they may be coming from a different industry, they're a career changer, but their profiles still talk about them as a, you know, working in the banking industry, but now they want to go into data analytics. Uh, but everything is about finance and banking and things like that. That's where they need to go and start changing their persona, so to speak, to match now, not their past experiences, but their future aspirations and ambitions going forward. There are a lot of sections that are connected with LinkedIn. And so we're just gonna highlight a few that you can work with. One of those is that feature section. So when you're going down your profile and it has features, again, this is a great place to put what we call assets. And the assets that you can include could be articles, they could be learnings or certifications you've gone through. They could be courses, they could be videos. Um, and that's something new, video and audio attachments to your LinkedIn profile. We'll touch base again on that in just a moment. Um, making it all relevant to the role that you're applying for, that you're seeking. Uh, these just add a really more of a, a really great new content feature that LinkedIn has to make it much more rich and enticing for recruiters to look at. Now, the about section that you have, this is basically your 30 second commercial. This is that elevator speech, again, that answers the question, tell me about yourself. So this is the area where you really want to be able to optimize it and make it rich with those descriptors and skills and keywords that's there. Um, and you can use bullet points with some narrative that's there. It's very different than your resume summary qualifications because you really don't necessarily have a, a limitation per se, but you want to make it obtainable. You want to make it digestible. So don't make it too wordy or too cluttered, but it needs to be focused and it really needs to be able to give them a nice introduction to do what? A call to action to give you that that call. And then that could be at the very bottom of your of your about section. You can have just simply, you know, if you're looking for someone who is an expert in cybersecurity to lock down your business for safer browsing, let's connect. I mean, something something like that. This is also an area where you can add tag uh, key tags. So those areas of those hashtags that might have cybersecurity, um, information security, the, any of the hashtags that could relate to your um, industry could be a good place for that to be as well in that about section. And we'll talk about that too in just a minute. So, <laughs> so again, other areas, obviously your experience section, that's gonna be a real hot spot for those algorithms. And that's where employers are gonna go down to really look at you know, uh, recruiters will look at where have you worked, what experience do you have, and what transferable skills. If you're coming from a different industry, you're like, I don't, I'm not in 
I'm not in this field yet. So how can I optimize my LinkedIn profile if I'm not there yet? Well, even if you need to connect with us at the Career Center, we might be able to help you to find out how to flip the switch a bit to begin to look at transferable skills that can transition into your next profession as you're seeking and obtaining that experience. It could make a difference with those algorithms to show how you fit into uh, that particular industry. So again, it functions a little bit in the same way as your, your resume. Um, you can be a little bit more of a narrative. You can be a little bit more descriptive uh, because there's not that page limitation that you have on your um, resume as well. Hashtags can be peppered throughout this section. Um, and I've seen that really nicely done with different uh, jobs that folks have had. And they've used hashtags with that particular role that they were in. And it just it looks sharp. First of all, the optics look really professional and it helps again with those recruiters who are using those hashtags um, on their side to find talent as well. The next section could be portfolios. And this is really important and very relevant for, for those in the IT field. And I get this a lot in the Career Center. Um, how, can I, how can I demonstrate my, my projects? You know, things I've done in cybersecurity or software development when I've done, you know, different, you know, different contests and games to practice my skill and my craft, so to speak, uh, with that particular uh, field that I'm working on. Um, demonstrating learnings, again, those assets that we talked about that could be there. Um, ensuring that, you know, your LinkedIn profile is going to be as relevant as possible. I'm going to throw this back over to Matt for him to talk a little bit more about portfolios and really a way to use the most relevant IT platforms out there to um, to kind of get your word out. So Matt, take it away. Yeah, so, so thanks Cliff. Yeah, um, so I really want to start off by by talking about what we can and can't share in our work as students. Um, it is in our College of IT, at least, handbook that students should not be sharing uh, solutions to assessments. So uh, it, it is stated in a lot of the tasks, for example, for software engineering, that these are portfolio pieces and we want them to be portfolio pieces for you. Um, however, specific solutions to the tasks shouldn't be shared. Instead, you should either be building upon them or there are several ways that you can share them privately and not publicly. So, for example, and this might apply mostly to software engineering, computer science, a little bit of the data analytics folks, but uh, for any others where you have uh, code-based solutions, this also applies. Repositories can be shared privately. So I, I'm talking about GitLab and GitHub type of uh, code repositories. There are ways to share those. now. These ways change, so I don't want to give you a single way here and now that will maybe be obsolete next month as GitHub does an update or GitLab does an update. Um, but if you look for solutions to share your code privately uh, with employers, there, you're going to find several forums. There are several tools out there that people have built. Um, and GitHub, at least recently, did launch, uh, well, recently is, I think, two years ago, did launch a way of sharing your, your repository just via a link, right? So there are ways to share your, your code privately. However, um, sharing working products can be more impactful than sharing the code. Most recruiters aren't really going to know what they're looking for uh, in a significant way. Most hiring managers aren't going to read all of the code you've ever written. They're just going to glance through to see the style of the code that you write. Um, do you write it in a professional manner? Uh, do you uh, put in professional comments and these sorts of, of things, right? So you don't need to share all the code you've ever written. Oftentimes, just sharing your um, profile in GitHub or GitLab will allow them to see sort of your work history of commits in your code and that you've been frequently coding for however many years. 
right? Or, or you know, specifically for these months, you know, heavy coding and projects that came out of it. And then if you're able to share your work products, so I said that you can't share your solutions to tasks, those are specifically the code portions. But if you have your uh, work products on a website, or deployed somewhere and are able to share those, those are very impactful. And that's something that the recruiter can easily see and understand. And it's something that a hiring manager can easily see and understand. I do have one caution with this. So I have some of the technologies that are used over there. I recommended Heroku for a very long time because they had a lovely free deployment um, method that they then have switched to a paid version, right? So again, I'm not going to advocate for any single method here. There are free solutions. There are limited time free solutions. Uh, for example, with AWS in particular is what I'm thinking of there. But with any of these, the costs can often escalate very, very quickly. So you need to make sure that you're setting them up very carefully, that you're putting limits on them that are appropriate. Um, it's very easy to deploy your project to, to AWS and then want to share it with others and be excited about it and then get hit with a few hundred dollar bill, right? All right. Thanks, Cliff. All right. Very good. Thank you so much for that. So carrying on with some of the areas of focus, uh, we keep talking about the skills section and different skills because of the importance that it has. So when you look at your skills section on your profile, um, you know, you you probably only see three at the top. So the, the three top skills should be the most important that you really want to get out there and kind of show. Although in that skills uh, plat or that skills uh, listing, if you will, or inventory, you can put, I think, up to 50 skills that's there, but only the top three will be seen unless the recruiter or the person clicks on show all skills, and then it shows everything that's there. Uh, that's perfectly fine, and they may very well do that, but make sure they're relevant. Make sure they're hard skills to your industry. Really uh, don't include, if at all possible, a lot of soft skills like typing. You know, you don't need to include that, but things that are going to be very relevant to your industry is what you want to show. Um, if you have endorsements and you can solicit some of those folks who will give you some kudos and endorsements uh, from connections, uh, those relevant skills in their endorsements that match that that section on the skills that works together. They're like they like they're shaking hands, so that helps to again increase those algorithms um, for you to work with that. And keep in mind that. Again, what we're seeing and what LinkedIn has shown is that with even five more skills that are listed in your profile, you can get up to 33% more messages from recruiters as much as those skills are relevant to your industry. And you can get 17 more time profile views. So again, that, that harkens back to completing your profiles making sure those are as relevant as possible so you can see um, everything that's there. All right, building networks, that's what it's all about. You wanna be able to really build your networks for connections. Uh, that's gonna be very um, much of a strategic process for that because the more you connect with others, obviously in your field, and especially those professionals or those companies or industries in your field, the better and the more uh, time and visibility you'll get that's out there for you to see that. But it's important that you do it with, with those in the industry that you're seeking. So here are some tips on being able to do that. As you can see, um, making sure your profile is public and there is a toggle switch that's there to help you do that. Uh, that makes you more authentic. It makes you more transparent. Um, it allows more visibility for those recruiters to find you. Uh, the more relevant of the pages that you like, the people that you follow, uh, the better, again, you're going to be much more focused and tightening your focus uh, toward that, that industry. Being active, 
you know, you can read articles, you can write your own articles, you can comment on the different articles. Showing some activity with that is going to be even more to your benefit to show that act, to show that action uh, for your uh, profile. Other areas that are beyond the basics, uh, as I call it, could be additional sections that you can include on your uh, profile. They could be areas where you show your certifications or even certifications that may be coming up, honors, awards, publications, projects. These are all sections that you can add to your, to your profile that makes it, again, much more robust, much more filled out as you're going forward with your, um, your online image uh, with your LinkedIn account as well. So just as a recap and some things that we've talked about, if you're just now joining us or you have joined us in the middle of the presentation, a quick commercial. This is being recorded. You will receive a recording if you've registered for the presentation that will be pushed out to everyone that's here. Um, at the beginning, as we were looking at profiles, we talked about the photo and the banner that's behind or that's that's the first page they're going to see. You want to make sure that that's professional. It's a clean looking photo, no distractions that are there. That helps to promote, promote your professional brand. That's there as well. Using hashtags. Here's some samples that I put in. Uh, cloud computing, software engineering. You can use course, course titles of, uh, of a hashtag if it's relevant to the kind of career that you're looking for. Um, adding pronouns and adding voice and video is now something that LinkedIn has built into those to help with the algorithms and that can even have a greater depth of reach if you add those elements to your to your profile. If you know any spoken languages, um, there has been some evidence and shown some really great interest for people who know American Sign Language and that's on their profile. That was a point of interest. I thought that was something to kind of highlight as an example, but if you have some conversational languages that you know uh, that just gives more depth of your personality and allows folks to know a little bit about the human side of who you are. So we want that high tech, high touch approach to who you are as a possible applicant to a career. Now, some interesting updates that you may have seen on LinkedIn, um, mostly looking at stats and looking at kind of the numbers. These are growing. These are changing. Uh, because we're just in that part of our existence with technology, but I thought it was interesting to see, you know, these numbers here, 86% of companies are using social recruiting to get candidates. So they may not always just look at your resume or look at Indeed or Handshake or any of the other platforms. They're looking at everything, 86%. LinkedIn data shows that, that out of this, 58, more than 58 million companies are on LinkedIn looking for candidates, 6.4 jobs as of March, 2023. So I find it kind of interesting. I, I get students very seldom, but they'll say there are no jobs out there. Oh yeah, we're, you know, really? So um, maybe let's look in and change your strategy a little bit. Let's look at that a little bit and see how it works. 77 job applications submitted every 60 seconds. Every 60 seconds. More than 900 million users, 94 recruiters that are using LinkedIn to vet and hire talent. Three people hired every 60 seconds. So are you one of those three? Can you be one of those three with looking at your LinkedIn profile? Let's hope so. Adding those video and rec audio recordings. Some stats on things. If you want to do an audio, keep it 15 seconds, just short. You don't want to restate your, your profile. It's just a short welcome message. That's probably all you need that's there. And then your ability, you can share resume data. So you can add, you know, up to five that's there. That could be interesting to increase those algorithms. And then LinkedIn has added some interview prep under your jobs tab that they have talked about. 
and they've also got some great blogs that speak about the um you know benefits of using linkedin and some tips for that so we talked about keeping up with activities and staying active what can you do on a daily basis maybe five minutes a day well obviously looking at your feed answering any 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 uh connections that you get you might reply back to say thank you for connecting something like that just spend a few minutes a day uh to be active on there we've kind of broke it down um monday seems to be the best day to be active to send messages and ask for invites the the, the stats show that that's a greater level of activity that's there during during the week um again tuesday you might break it up it, some folks have said it's kind of overwhelming how do i how can i break it up into little chunks of just different activities these can help you out with that wednesday can be a time to just kind of middle of the week clear your inbox thursday could be a time to like or comment on posts spend some time to you know research and and look for more information on your industry friday we're kind of going down toward the weekend not a lot of activities going on but still revisit your profile any little updates you might want to change uh, reflect on the the week's activities maybe you did something great at work you can add to your profile so that could be something you can do at the close of your week Here is, uh, we're at the tail end of our presentation, so we wanted to just give you kind of a heads up, a little commercial of the uh, Career and Professional Development Center, the career development topics that we cover, that we could talk to you about, services we offer, including document and LinkedIn profile reviews. So all you need to do is contact our office. You can see our, um, our page down there, wgu.edu forward slash and I believe it's careers dash services, but if you just put career services, I think it will uh, wrap you back around to, to our office. Now we have a few minutes left. I know a lot of folks have been putting things in the chat. Um, if you have any questions or more Q and A coming up right after this, we're gonna have our, um, our drop-in chat to help out. If you can't make that, that's perfectly fine. You can still contact us on our website. You can phone in. There's our phone number and our extension. What you'll do is you'll get a voicemail, leave the message in your contact information, and then the advisor will call you back either that same day or the next business day. So there is a way to contact us there. We're on, link, on Facebook as well. We're putting out information all the time. But most definitely, go back up to that green block to our website. Come in, take a tour of our office, find out all of the things, the self-serve resources we have. We'd be super glad to help you out. Hey, Cliff. Yes. Sorry. I do have a question, but if it's not a good time, that's, we had one from the chat, but if it's not a good time, I can hold it. I'm sure. Sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to, to, to jump ahead there. Um, this particular question just says, how do we optimize for not having any strong experience in the career role we want? I pivoted to cybersecurity from an administrative assistance background, and I never know what to say for job title and experience. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I, um, as far as any kind of heading at the top of your profile, you, at this point, you may not need to use anything unless you could say aspiring, you know, software developer, you know, something that I fact that kind of clues in that this is something that, that you're in progress of obtaining could be something just to let the recruiters know that. And then as far as other, you know, like within your, your experience section, you may simply, again, try to find transferable skills or at least highlight those maybe soft skills. Um, and I have had recruiters tell me, even if you're a, a software engineer and a programmer, you still need people skills. You got to work with people. You got to play well in the, in the sandbox. You have to be professional, um, use professional language because you're going to work with teammates as well as your boss, supervisors, maybe even other departments. And so those professional soft skills 
maybe something that you would highlight versus, you know, specific hard skills from a different industry that really is not relevant. At the beginning, just to start up while you're gaining the experience you need, then you begin to change out those skills as you learn those technical um, skills. And if I can add a bit to that, Cliff, I think it's, you don't have to be something you're not, right? Recruiters will see through if you try to stuff in words and things that don't mm -hmm. fit with the level that you're at. It's okay to be new. It's okay to be looking for a change in new positions and, and different things, but also highlight the skills, the strengths that you do have, as Cliff was saying, and um, seek out projects, seek out things that you can, um, try out to show your interest and to show your ability you're if you're in a degree program you're already doing that um but if you've graduated and you're you're still seeking positions or if you're trying to pivot within um your field then you can go out and find opportunities that demonstrate your interest and really what you want to do mm -hmm. and then highlight those excellent excellent that's a great tip that's a great tip for that so all right, folks. Well, we are at the top of the hour. I know if there are questions that we were not able to get to and you're able to come over to the drop-in session, that's great. If not, you can also visit us and we'd be glad to do what we can to answer any of those questions that we were not able to get to. Um, we also, from the Career and Professional Development Center, we have webinars that specifically work on LinkedIn in a general way, so you may want to find those webinars in our events section when those are scheduled for you to attend. Um, if you can't attend them, you can register and get a recording after that session as well. So thank you all for joining us and being attentive to our time today. Again, once this video comes out and we publish it, we'll be able to send it out to everyone that registered and you'll get a copy. and. Hope that helps. Thank you all. Thank you, Shay, for joining us, and Matt and Jess for sharing your expertise and background. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.